copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Grande offers every boy and girl a complete police outfit absolutely free. Read all about these free gifts in the latest issue of the unique Calling All Cars News, out today. Ask for your free copy wherever Rio Grande cracks gasoline is sold. Rio Grande publicizes the heroic deeds of the police in their war on crime because more of the West police and emergency cars are powered by Rio Grande cracked gasoline than any other brand. Leading cities and counties of the West specify the same Rio Grande crack you get from your neighborhood dealer. Because official records prove they get faster miles and more miles for the money. Angeles Police Department. Chief Davis. Good evening, friends. Our prisons are full of young men and women who made just one misstep off the straight and narrow path of honesty and were caught. It is a pity that the lives of these young people must be ruined merely because they made one mistake. But the law cannot make exceptions. The beautiful young blonde girl in tonight's case was a good girl at heart, but she got into bad company. A few years ago, Burma White was enjoying life. She went to parties and dances. She met a man she knew was the wrong kind. She should have hindered her association before the inevitable happened. She was drawn into a life of crime, fascinated by its cheap excitement and thrills. Soon, she was so deeply enmeshed with the underworld that she couldn't fight her way back to respectability. Today, Burma White is in prison. When a good girl gets mixed up with the wrong kind of men, they usually have to be separated by the police. So the moral of the story you will hear tonight is plain. Don't associate with those who try to beat the law. They can't succeed. They'll drag you down with them, and the only way to stay out of jail is to stay on the right side of the law. In 1930, Tom White was sentenced to San Quentin to serve a maximum term of 10 years for grand theft. He proved to be such an incorrigible prisoner, getting into fights and fomenting trouble among fellow convicts, that he was sent to Folsom. In spite of his incarceration in that haven of the two-time losers, he was paroled in April 1933. At a nightclub, he meets Burma Adams, a young blonde who worked in a beauty shop. And then, on the night of August 16th. You see, baby, the first thing you need in this racket is a car. Yeah, but we ain't got one, Pa. Sure, I know that. We might have to stick up people in the street. Oh, that's small-time stuff. We're going to operate in a big way. Yeah, but where are you going to get a car? Uh, right here. What do you mean? You see that car stopping there? Yeah. Well, that's... Hours right now. Can I take it from him? Sure. Gee, you're a hard guy, Tom. Sure I am, baby. 
How about you, you scared? Me scared? No. He, I get a kick out of this. Uh, that's the way I like to see him. Come on, babe. Good night, Leslie, and thanks for a marvelous evening. Good night, Mary. I'll see you Tuesday. Pick him up. Oh. What do you mean? Pick him up and give me your dough. I haven't very much on me. Oh. All right, give me all you got. Hey, you too. Oh, I have to say. I had it with that person. Well, but, but I tell you, I haven't. Uh, shut up and get out of the car, the two of you. Now get in, babe, and start her up. <laughs> you get your car back sooner or later. And if you know what's good for you, you'll not walk to the bulls too soon. That's all there is to it. Gee, Tom, you're a smart guy. Here, let's turn up this street. Hmm, pretty swell dumps along here. Ought to be some dough in some of them. Can I pick up an apartment? Oh, I don't know yet. No. We're transferring right here. Park right behind that car. The one that just pulled up in front of that apartment house. Well, what are you going to do now? Well, we'll take that one. This heap will be hot by now. You can bet that mug is already reported to the bulls as a stolen car. Get down. This is a holdup. What? Hey, what? Uh, just hey. keep your mouth shut, mister, and hand over your doll. <laughs> Runs away. Mr. Lewis's description of the bandit tallies with that of the other victim. 
Chain stores and drug stores are burglarized. Pedestrians held up on the street, and every time the bandit is seen, the description is the same. Usually, he's accompanied by his blonde companion. On the night of September 6th, the radio police car covering its beat sees the missing Chevrolet parked in the filling station lot. Yeah, that's it, all right. License plates and description fit. You better pull in and find out about it. Okay. Want some gas, boys? Nope. Know anything about that poop over there? Why, no. What do you mean? Who's it belong to? Oh, some blonde lives up the street here. Oh, a blonde, eh? Yeah, she brought it in yesterday to have the battery charged. Well, yeah, what's her name? I don't know. Where does she live? I don't know that either. What's the matter? Is it hot? Oh, no. We thought for a minute it was a car we were looking for, but I guess we're mistaken. Yeah, the car we want is owned by a redhead. Well, good night, buddy. Good night. That's it, all right. I'm to get to a box and call headquarters. That's what I'm doing right now. Robbery detail, Burris speaking. Officer Diller, radio car 13 speaking. Yeah? We just located that stolen Chevrolet, 5P389. Where? It's parked in the filling station, sir, and turn on the lift. Okay, we'll be right out. Stay away from that car. Yeah, I'm staying away from it. We're parked on down in the dark. That's right. But don't let anyone see you there. We don't want to scare them away. Right. Okay, Anderson and I will be right out. Hello, boys. Hello, Lieutenant. Anything happened yet? Not a thing. Where is the Chevy? In the filling station at the right-hand corner down there. You can just see the hood of it by the grease rack there. Oh, yeah. Did you talk to the station attendant? Yeah. What did he say? Said the car belonged to a blonde. Well, that's it's okay. Said she left it to have the battery charged and she'd be back for it any time. And she probably won't. It's a thousand to one that car is abandoned for good. But I'll play the long chance that she's coming back for it. It's worth trying. Right. Now, you boys better get out of here and stay away from this corner. We'll hold the stake from now on. Okay. I'll right. tell the boys to relieve you to stay away out of this neighborhood and tell them to tell the boys to relieve them. Right. Good night. Uh, all right. Well, let's see where we better hide. We can't stand out here on the sidewalk all night. Say, Andy, look. Right next to that filling station is a garage, see? Mm. We could get in there. Hey, that's a swell idea. Come on. Don't look like there's anybody home. Yes, there is. There's a light in the back. Yeah, this will be a great spot. Those hedges hide everything. We can see right through them. Yes? We're from police headquarters. Well, what's the matter? Is there some trouble? No, nothing's wrong, but we're looking for a car thief. A car thief, is it? Worse than horse thieves they've got to be. Well, what do you want with me? I ain't no car thief. Oh, we know that. We'd like to hide in your garage. One of the cars this man stole is parked in the filling station next door, and we want to watch it through your head and try to pick up the crook when he comes back for it. Oh. Well, I see. Well, I can't think of no reason why you shouldn't hide in the garage. Well, that's fine. Uh, look here. You, uh, you got a car with you? Why, uh, yes. Well, I'll take my car out of the garage. You can park yours in there. Well, that's swell. I'll park mine on the street. <laughs> that is, if you don't give me no ticket. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about that. Midnight, the hidden detective watch the filling station. The attendant closes up and goes home. The stream of traffic dwindles as the city goes to sleep. Still, the guardians of the law keep their watch. Well, it doesn't look like they're coming for this crate tonight. Maybe not. And again, maybe they will. If the girl comes back alone, we will have to follow her. You realize 
like that? Sure, or we can't let the guy get away. Well, I've been thinking maybe we'd better get a couple more men in case we have to surround their hideout. Yeah, not a bad idea. I'll call in for a relief so we can get some dinner. And I think it'd be a good plan to change clothes. Got any dirty old pants at home you use when you grease your car? Yeah, I think so. Well, you'd better get them. Detectives Maxwell and Bergeron relieve Burris and Anderson. As dawn throws her roses spread over the waking city, they return clad in old clothes, disguised as mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the idea of the glad rag? They don't want to wake up the neighborhood. Hey, what is this, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson? Don't be funny. If that girl comes back for the car, I'm getting a good look at her. And these greasy clothes won't arouse suspicion. Anything happen while we were away? No, not a thing. Quiet as a graveyard. Well, we ought to get some action soon. The boy's opening up at the filling station. It's the day shift, man. Maybe he'd know something more about the car. Hmm. Matter of fact. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, hello. How are you this morning? Well, <laughs> I declare I never would have recognized you with them duds on. You ready for some right perch sleuthing, ain't you? Maybe. Say, look here. Do you want to help us? Anything I could do, I'd be glad to. Good. You know that bird in the filling station? Bob, sure I know it. Well, mosey down there and find out what you can about this car here. Ask him who left it and what they said, will you? Yes, indeed, I'll be glad to. But don't let on about us. Oh, no, don't worry about that. I got better sense than that. Here he comes back. Took him long enough to find out anything. Uh, he's a great old character. Probably had to settle the international debt situation while he was at it. Well, it's people like him that are a big help sometimes. Yeah, that's right. Well, Dad, what'd you find out? Well, not very much. It seems that this blonde girl left the car to have the battery charged. That was two days ago, and she ain't been for it since. Bob says she lives up on Coronado somewhere, and that she's got two other cars, a, a Ford and a Essex. Ooh, two others, eh? Well, is there anything else I can do for you? No, I don't think so. The missus is getting some breakfast. I might be able to get her to warm up some coffee for you. Well, that'd be all right. I could do with a little coffee. the long, hot morning, the four detectives remain on watch. Then at three in the afternoon, just as they're beginning to feel that their vigil is in vain, a blonde girl arrives at the filling station. Hey, there she is. Who? The blonde. Yeah, that's her. She's gone over to the Chevrolet. Well, we'll have to follow her and get the guy, too. Well, I'm going to get a good look. <laughs> Unsteadily, apparently a drunken hobo. Burris, clad in his greasy old clothes, wanders down Third Street past the filling station. As the blonde girl fills her tank with gas and chats with the station attendant, Burris has plenty of time to look her over and check her appearance against the description given by the many hold-up victims. As she pulls out of the filling station, Bergeron and Maxwell follow her in their car. Burris staggers up to Ron Delay until he's out of sight and then breaks into a run. Joined by Anderson, he streaks between houses to Coronado. They watch as the blonde turns into an alley and parks the car in a garage behind an apartment house, where she is joined by a man in a blue sweater. Bergeron and Maxwell drive by them as they are locking the garage. After the two suspects have entered the apartment house, Bergeron and Maxwell join Burris and Anderson. That's the girl, all right. Yeah, that's the guy, too. He fits the description to a T. All right. Maxwell, you and Andy guard that alley entrance to the apartment. Come on, Bergeron. You and I are going to talk to the landlady. Yes? 
How do you do, ma'am? We're police officers, and we'd like you to help us. Why? Why, come in. Is anything wrong? What can I do? We're looking for a blonde who lives in this building. A blonde? <laughs> well, there are several blondes here. And who are they? Well, there's Miss Arnold. What's she look like? Uh, I wouldn't want her to go any further, for she is heavy. In fact, she's very fat. Yeah, that's not the one. Who else? Uh, then there's Mrs. Gilman. She's 40, she's a day, though she's twice to tell people she's only 32. No, no, that's not the one. And then, oh, yes, there's young Miss Adams. She hasn't been here long. And, uh, what's she like? Well, she's a child about 19 or maybe 20. Hmm. She's thin and pretty in a way. That's the one we're looking for. Uh, what apartment is she in? She's in 218. Now, look here, I don't want any trouble in my don't place. Don't worry, ma'am, there won't be any trouble. You just stay right here in your apartment. <laughs> and Bergeron called Anderson and Maxwell in from the alley. And the four, guns drawn, climb the stairs to apartment 218. They find the door unlocked. Just her, grab her, Bert. Okay. And he's just left the guy down the hall. Hey, hey, come back down, coming. We're police officers. Get him out. Uh, come back down. Get him up for what? Hey. What are they doing? Shut it down. Now, just sit still until we find out what this is all about. I don't know what's the matter myself yet. We'll be as good to you as you let us. Uh, what are you, police officers? Yes, ma'am, we're police officers. Oh, mercy, I, I thought you were hold-up men. And just who are you? Uh, I'm Burma's mother. Well, boys, what happened? That guy in the blue sweater opened up on us, so we let him have it. Is, is he dead? I don't know. Where's the phone? Over there on the wall. What's she doing here? She came down here to see him. Tom's out on parole, you know. Hello, Bill. Anderson. Send the ambulance out the second and four now. Yeah. And then Scott. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Make it sound it over. Don't let my mother know what I mean to. She'll find out from the papers. Well, I don't know if you find out that way, then no. All right, all right. Anderson, place these two women in technical custody. I want to talk to the girl. Come on in the kitchen, Burma. Now, let's find out all about this. What's your name? Burma Adams. What's the boyfriend's name? Tom White. Where's his gun? Where's that gun? The one that blinded Miss Withington, that 32. Oh, that one. That's in his room, I guess. What room? 327. Maxwell. Get up to that guy's room, number 327, and see if you can find that 32. Right. Now, where's your car? What car? The Chevrolet. I haven't got any Chevrolet. Oh, yes, you have. I saw you drive it away from the filling station. Well, then you ought to know where it is. Where's the key to it? I'm not talking to it. Oh, please, listen. Don't let my mother know about this. I won't tell her a thing. How many jobs have you and Tom pulled, Vermin? Oh, not so many. Did you hold up that drugstore on Western Avenue? Yes. Those chain grocery stores? Yes. About how many? Five. I can tell you all that later, can't I? I don't want my mother to hear about this. All right, Burma. Oh, oh, by the way, why did you hang on to that Chevrolet? Didn't you know we had the license number? Oh, I don't know. I wanted to get rid of it. But she, I fell in love with it. I knew it was a honey. Got a rattle in it. Oh, boy, what a pickup. Gee, it was a swell car. It was a kid driving it. Pardon me, Burris. Ambulance just arrived. The guy is dead. <gasps> hey, Burris, let me get a statement from the girl, will you? What's your name, kid? Shall I tell him, or do you want to? My name is Burma White, from now on. Burma White? What do you mean? I married him on Friday. Hey, why didn't you bump her off, too? Look, she's all hopped up. You better get a say I'm through talking. Get out of here, you. But I gotta get a statement. Get out. Okay. But the pig... I want you to sit right with me. Oh, don't worry, kid. I will. Come on, we'll get you out of here. There's the kitchen door leading to the hall. Yeah. <gasps> well, maybe we'd better.
trying to go out the front way. Oh. Well, that's all, all right. I guess I can step over his body. November 6, Burma White, tool of the parole convict, Tom White, was sentenced to serve from 30 years to life on seven counts of first-degree robbery, one count of attempted robbery, and three counts of assault with deadly weapon with intent to commit murder. This series of crimes in which Burma White participated would never have entered a career of crime had the parole system been stringent enough to prevent desperados from having their freedom. It is my sincere hope that you, the citizens, will demand a proper parole system so that you and yours will not be in constant danger from the ruthless viciousness of men of the stripe of Tom White. Thank you, Chief Davis. Ladies and gentlemen, you are almost certain to see a Rio Grande service station tomorrow, and we hope you'll drive in to ask for a free copy of the Calling All Cars News. To read about the free gifts for your boys and girls. Or to fill up with Rio Grande cracks. The gasoline that gives you so much more and costs you no more. And remember, more police cars, fire engines, and other emergency equipment are powered by Rio Grande cracks wherever it is sold than any other gasoline. And if you'll take the advice of America's most expert oil buyers, you'll take your car into a Rio Grande station every time you need oil. Sinclair motor oils are featured at all Rio Grande stations. The same Sinclair oils that are specified by 150 leading railroads and by the leading airplane lines. Sinclair oils are de-waxed and de jellied so that all the useless filler you get in other oils is removed. And you get more real lubrication for your money than ever before. Frederick Lindsley bidding you good night for the Rio Grande Oil Company. <laughs> <laughs>